Um, so I want to welcome uh, Alonso Silva, who is a researcher uh, in verifiable AI at Nokia Bell Labs. And he received his PhD in physics from the Ecole Supérieure d'Electricité. And he also served as a postdoctoral research, uh, researcher at the University of California, uh, Berkeley. So today Alonso will talk about AI and large language models and their predecessors. Um, is the AI revolution truly a revolution, a drastic change, or we have experienced a more progressive evolution? And are we really that far away from past models and efforts? And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So uh, I wanted to start with uh, so uh, with a phrase which is uh, from Arthur Clare Clark. And Arthur Clark said, uh, uh, "Any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic." And I want to kill a little bit the magic <laughs> because uh, uh, so in general, when people see the first time. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, in general, when they see ChatGPT and you write a prompt, and then it gives you an answer which is related to what you ask, uh, people think it's magic. And I want to <laughs> a little bit kill the magic, and because I think this is what scientists do. <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to ruin it for you. Uh, so first, the first I wanted to show you is a video. So the first thing you need to understand. Uh, is that when, uh, uh, so here in this case, I'm using GPT-4 tokenizer. And basically when uh, GPT-4 tokenizer receive a text, for example, in this case, uh, a text which is saying, uh, not all heroes wear capes. Uh, this is going to be decomposed in a certain amount of numbers, which are called tokens. And these tokens, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between these uh, numbers and the words. Not necessarily words, because as you see here, uh, capes is cut in two, but uh, in general it will be, uh, these uh, tokens associated to this uh, uh, to each word, and there is a finite amount of tokens. The, the finite amount is around fifty thousand. Uh, if you didn't notice in the video, it uh, it show uh, uh, like there are around fifty thousand tokens, and you can uh, see those tokens associated to each number. There is a word, and this is uh, related to what the language model speak. So this is his language. It's like, okay, if I see some uh, ja uh, Japanese or if I see some Chinese, I don't understand it. But uh, uh, the language model, uh, what he sees is these numbers. So this is his uh, language. And uh, once you have these numbers, you can do uh, two things. Uh, I mean, uh, you can, first you need to define an architecture and then you're going to do two things. One is matrix multiplication which is just a bunch of uh, sum and multiplications, and uh, a projection into some function, which are called activation functions. And after you have done this, you have all you need to make a response. And in this case, for example, here I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, you can run the video perhaps. And here I'm uh, basically submitting a prompt. This will get transformed into numbers. These numbers are going to pass through these stages of uh, matrix multiplication and uh, activation functions, and then it's going to, so here in, in this particular case, I'm using NumPy, which is just a numerical uh, programming. So it's not uh, any uh, uh, sophisticated uh, uh, software, and it's uh, answering you, it's auto-completing the phrase. So Alan Turing theorized uh, that computers will one day become the most powerful machines in the, in the world. And uh, if, you, if you see the same uh, thing, uh, but if you can run the next video, uh, you can see exactly the same phrase uh, and, and see that basically the way the language model is building this, it's going to basically here, I'm going to input the text. This will be transformed into these numbers. And then given these uh, numbers, it's going to try to predict the next token. So every time his task is to predict one token at a time, and you will see that indeed this phrase to complete this exactly as I was showing before. So in this case, it's Alan Turing theorizes that computer will one day become the most powerful machines on the planet. And, and that's basically what, what it's doing. So basically, we have, uh, at the end of the day, we, we want to predict just the next token. It's one token at a time. And it can be seen, since the, the quantity of tokens is around 50,000, it can be seen as a multi-class classification. So in reality, it is similar to what you have like in Gmail. 
So in Gmail, you have, uh, okay, some mails go to uh, promotion, some may go to social, some may go to spam. Okay, you have three classes or some mail, some mails go directly to your inbox and you have four classes. In this case, we have a lot more, we have 50,000, but still it is basically a multi-class classification problem. And uh, here, uh, the other thing I want to show, so here if you, if you run uh, the video, you can see, okay, the same phrase again. And is when I when I am getting this response, the more powerful machine on the planet, uh, uh, then what I'm doing actually, it is, I am maxim, I'm every time choosing the most probable next word, but you have seen probably that GPT-4 not always answer the same. So here you can see, for example, that you can take samples, so you don't necessarily take the strategy of taking always the most likely uh, token, but you can also force uh, GPT, in this case it's GPT-2, when, when, which was when OpenAI was actually open or a little bit more open than now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can see that uh, I'm now fixing, so if, for example, here I put a certain strategy, the strategy number zero, and it will generate always the same response. Before I was putting the, 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 the strategy 42 and it's always giving me exactly the same response. So, and, and it is normal because at the end of the day, what we are doing, it's always this um, matrix multiplication and uh, activation function to predict the next token. And the strategy of uh, what I choose is actually what will give me uh, what's the answer. So yes, I hope uh, I kill a little bit the magic for you. And <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alonso. Actually, you made it even more magic to me. I'm even, <laughs> I'm even a little bit more uh, impressed right now. So it's, uh, it's extremely interesting. Thank you so much for this. Uh, and now we will uh, 